Hey everybody, it's Dr. Chuck back again. Today I'm coming to you from the Comores Discovery Hub Laboratories, where the magic happens for our Freon and Option refrigerants. Today I'm starting off with part one of a three-part series. I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of 454B versus 410A. So our workhorse refrigerant and air conditioning and what's going to change how they compare side-by-side -side with 454B or Option XL41. Part one, I'm going to talk about the refrigerant itself and how you're going to experience it. Part two, we'll get into some of the performance and then three, some hands-on information on how to handle it. So let's get started and we'll look right at the refrigerant jugs themselves. We well, can see the 410 as well as the XL41 or 454B jugs. First thing you may notice, the color. Nice pink jug for the 410A. All new refrigerants are going to be this off-white, grayish uh, color. Therefore, you're going to need to read the label to know exactly what's in it. This one here labeled, obviously, XL41 R54B. Second point you might notice is the red stripe. So the A2L flammable refrigerants are going to come with a red top or a red stripe, uh, as you see here. Another thing you may notice up on the valve, we're going to have left-hand threads. You can't really tell it visually here, but you're going to need an adapter to attach to the refrigerant jug. I'll put a picture of one up here, but they're relatively easy to find at this point. Uh, you can't see it here since it's been removed, since these cylinders have been opened, but there is usually some protective shrink wrap up there with a hologram on it. Again, that has helped you assure you're having a legitimate uh, refrigerant option from Comores. Another important point I want to point out here is the pressure relief device. Now remember in our old cylinders, it was a rupture disc here. If the cylinder would get overpressurized and present a danger, the rupture disc would release and it would reduce the pressure and uh, you would lose the charge in a refrigerant cylinder. The new jugs are going to have a pressure relief device and this is a uh, not a burst disc, but this will just relieve pressure and then reseat once the pressure has gone down. Again, a reminder, our recommendation per the SDS for all refrigerant cylinders of this type, do not store in conditions above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So be sure to take care out in the uh, service vans, in vehicles, especially in the summer when it could get heated. You want to keep that at a temperature where you're not going to raise the pressure of the jug to a point where you would get a pressure relief going off. Uh, something else I would point out, the fill weight, the 410, came with 30 pounds of refrigerant. It turns out based on liquid densities, the 454B is going to have 20 pounds in it per jug. Again, that only has to do with what can safely be, lo be loaded into a cylinder. So in the next part of this series, we'll talk a little more about the performance and the handling of these things, but you can see from a comparison of just the basic uh, physical chemical properties, 454B and 410A are going to be very, very similar in terms of molecular weights, boiling points. Two notable differences we'll get into. One, we are going from an A1 non-flammable to an A2L mildly flammable product, and we have to make sure that we do everything needed to uh, make that transition. And again, the reason we're all doing this is the greatly reduced GWP. So you see the GWP from 410 around 2000 going down. Uh, to well below the regulatory limit of 700, but down to the 460s uh, of great reduction in GWP with this more environmentally sustainable refrigerant. Um, be sure to stop back and check out parts two and three. And, and so again, if you have any questions at all about any of our refrigerants, please feel free to reach out and be glad to help you as we all go through this transition. Stay safe out there. Have a great day. So long.